Another way to do a process would be to seal it in a thermal container so heat can't flow. When heat can't flow, we call those processes adiabatic. For adiabatic compression and expansion, we can also talk about energy changes. So let's do that. Here we have adiabatic expansion. Now, if I expand, I let the gas expand adiabatically, in order for the gas to expand, it has to do work. Now, it can't absorb a joule of heat to replace the joule of work it did, to re-energize itself. So, I do a joule of work, I use a joule of energy. Do a joule of work, use a joule of energy. My energy drops. And for an ideal gas, if the energy drops, the temperature drops. So, ideal gas is expanding adiabatically, work is uh, negative, and the change in energy, negative. It could also be zero because I could expand against a vacuum and not have to do work. What about compression? If I compress the gas, now work is being done on the gas, and the gas is saying, I'm getting this energy from work, but I can't release it as heat, Q has to be zero, so my energy just goes up. So in this case, work is positive and the energy change is positive for adiabatic compression. Practically, it usually means you just, just do the process quickly because you can quickly do work, but heat flow always takes time. So a rapid process is often an adiabatic process. And we can expand either adiabatically or we can be compressed adiabatically. For ideal gases, these are the summary.